I'm just trying to get the camera set up. Change the angle a little bit today because I'm going to be pouring um, puddle pours. And somebody tell me if you can hear me. I'm trying to figure out if the mic is blocked. Hi, Greg. Finishing up the last of the mixing, uh, I've already put the flow trial in the paints. Mix that up. About 60 stirs is what it takes to mix up the paint, and now I'm um, adding water because I'm going to need probably um, probably at least 16 ounces of paint, not including the white that'll be the background. Or actually, I've got some leftover pearl and gold that I might use. And then these still might need to be thinned out by the time I actually pour puddles today. So in order to try to get two pictures that are similar, I have to actually put them side by side and pour the puddles at the same time. Let's see. That's what I'm going to attempt today. So, um, I've explained before, I have some gold left over that I don't like from Artist Loft. And instead of wasting it, it's easier for me just to um, go ahead and use it as the background to help me move the paints around the canvas. This has been sitting for off and on for about two weeks now. And it's got flow trial and water. And then as I need it, I just add more water to it. Same thing with um, the silver that was left over from the other day. Um, I ended up not using as much silver, and I really like using the silver um, to add a little bit of sheen, but I didn't need as much, so I've just left it out. Add about a half a half a tablespoon of water to it, and then just stir it really well, checking for lumps, and then just remembering that when I put it on the canvas, I'll need to watch for lumps too, and pick those out before before it starts drying. Okay. So we've got um, bronze, a metallic turquoise, which is more blue, indigo, cobalt, uh, 14 karat gold. I do like the 24 karat gold by um, Decor, but uh, they don't have it at Michael's, so I usually end up getting uh, one of the other companies 14 karat gold, and I like it much better than this Artist Loft, which is too yellow. And let's see, I still have to stir just a little bit more. Okay. Let's see. So we've got, got our white here. Do a quick mix. So I determined last time I used this paint as uh, one of the paints that I use in the background that because there's so much metallic in it, it's better for me just to use it around the borders so that I make sure all my borders are covered and then use either my metallic or silver or white in the middle. There's just something um, that makes too much movement. There's too much reaction when you use this with all of the other colors. So I'd rather just use it around the edges 
And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. It's just, I'm pouring straight for the edges. Those are the hardest to cover when you're pouring. Uh, because we typically pour in a circle. Today I'm gonna be pouring in puddles. So that's called a puddle pour, very simple. There's a little glob I gotta get rid of. Get rid of all the globs beforehand. Some of these are just little bits of paint that need to be rubbed in, smeared in, and some of them are actual blobs. So get rid of those immediately. But there's no sense in wasting the paint. Okay. So again, just smearing this around the edges. Wet paint needs to move against wet paint. If it were to be put on the canvas and then you move it around, you will lose some of your design. Um, and you also might lose some of the movement of the paint. So it's better just to go ahead and put down a layer of wet. So that's our base gold. Here's a little bit of our silver. Run that right down the edge here. I do see some blobs in this one, and that is some of the problem with leaving your paints out for a while. You'll end up with blobs. I will go ahead and get rid of those. Just scrape them right on out. I apologize if you're on the screen. I cannot see with the reflection right now. I would try to say hello to everybody, but that actually drives me nuts when I'm watching somebody and they're they're squinting and look at the screen and squinting is just not a good look on me. Okay, so now we're gonna put the white down. Be bold, right? white is pre-mixed. Um, I pre-mix it days in advance with this pump on it and I just try to make sure that the end nozzle stays clear. And then I don't have to remix water with it typically. Some of my smaller bottles I do if I leave them open at all. So I'm going for a little bit of negative space today. I'm trying to get a little bit of uh, white in the pictures. So we'll actually pour white in the puddles and then move it. And I do not want to pour the same combination in each puddle. So I'm going to mix it up so that it brings a little bit more interest to the look. This dark indigo is kind of the unifying color, so it will be everywhere on this. This turquoise has metallic in it, whereas the lighter green turquoise does not. The bronze is metallic. So we're going to have a lot of neat metallics when it dries. Let's see. 
I'm also going to be doing a swish of this bronze with the blue because that's just such a spectacular combo. All right, so I'm going to go back in with some white. I do normally pour this from a smaller bottle, but I had um, two classes over the weekend and I have not mixed any new paints yet. Um, all my bottles are empty, so I'm going straight from the big bottle. And I do want the bronze I really want this bronze to be one of the standout colors, so it will be in almost every puddle. I haven't used much of this yet, so let's go use some of that. It looks a little thick, so let me see what's going on with it. My girl might be watching. She's flying to Vegas today. She's at the airport right now. Okay, we got a lot of cell reaction in these puddles here. With this white paint, it just really reacts a lot. Okay, got some lumpiness in this one too. Put a little bit more. This is Floetrol, mostly water mixed with a little bit of Floetrol. I'm also gonna swish this one across. Okay, now So what I want to do is make sure this paint is going to move. I'm going to put down more puddles of white. I really like a river of paint in between these colors because I want the colors to kind of smear into their own little rivers. Once you, if you have these puddles that just jam up kind of like this puddle, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's going to lose some of its definition if I don't pour paint in between it to make it its own individual, individual look. Same thing here. Same thing here. Alright, so we've got a lot of paint on the canvas. We're going to let it settle for a few minutes um, because we've got things that are creating little webs and designs. Give it a minute to do its thing. Make a few more rivers. And then we'll go to town just pouring this stuff all over the place. I'm actually going to pour probably 50% of this paint off. So I'm going to stretch for just a minute because uh, I'm kneeling on this hard floor and it's not comfortable. I've got my corner catchers ready, which these all come off of the canvases that I get. Just pop them open, tear them down to the right size. And the reason I use those is to make sure that all my paint runs right off the edge of this canvas. Um, I want to get it to the edge and then have it form, form a waterfall over the edge, but not lose all my paint. And by using these, you can typically save yourself several ounces of paint. So we're gonna tip this. It's gonna be very hard to tip all this at once because I'm tipping it from one canvas to another. There are two canvases here. But I do kind of want to have a unifying look. 
So I'm going to tip from one to the other and back again. Okay, now I'm going to separate them and then start tipping. Coming down to cover this corner first. Bottom corner. My edges, I'm sorry I can't show you guys this, using my corner catcher to catch some of this paint. And I'm really stretching it out, trying to make these Designs look more like big river flows. Okay. Now, let's see. You've got to fix a little in the corner here. Let's see if we can put a little white paint. Whoa, I put a ton of white paint on that corner. All right, that's all right. All right, so now the key is going to be not to blob it on this other one. So we're going to come down here to the bottom first. Get this corner filled. Okay, come down to the bottom on this. No corner catchers on this one. There's a lot of paint on here. Don't need it. Actually going to let a lot drip off this corner because I don't want an entire puddle down there. I don't want it to look like I just left a whole puddle. Stretch, come on, stretch. Okay. Alrighty, and let's see if we can tip some of that white off the corner there. Okay, so now I'm going to go around and check all my corners. And I'm going to do all of that off camera because I don't want to drop paint off my fingers into the painting. And I think I'm actually going to tip this one some more. It's got so much paint on it, especially that corner up there. I just think it'll look more interesting if I get the actual ring off. All right, so that is that is off. That looks much better to me. It looks more like a, I don't know. It still looks more like a wave or something coming in. And I actually think oh, I just got a huge blob on my other painting. I'm gonna tip some of this off. Actually, I'm gonna go this way. So I want more of this blue to come through. I did exactly what I didn't want to do on the other painting, which was to drop a big blob of paint. Okay. I like that better. Okay. Now let's see if I can fix this one. If you can see right here near my thumb, that's paint that came off of my finger. It's a perfect circle. So I'm going to try to pick this up, turn it. See if I can tip some of that off without losing my whole design. Or at least changing it so that, yep, 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 it's going, it's going, it's going. Okay, that's better. Alrighty. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go wash my hands up and see if I do not make a mess everywhere else. Bye.
sorry guys. <laughs> 